Former adult film star Lana Rhodes said she wants all her old videos to be deleted. Lana Rhodes has opened up about why she probably would have deleted all her old adult film videos by now if she could. I don't really, do I feel bad for her for wanting to wish that she could take all these things away? Is there certain things that I wish I could go back and, and, and undo? Sure, of course, but like she benefited from a lot of these actions. So essentially what we're seeing here is single moms. You don't know my circumstances with my child um, or his father. And yeah, that's basically it. No man wants to raise another man's child and be the cleanup guy. Pass. So what you said, right? Former adult film star Lana Rhodes said she wants all her old videos to be deleted. Lana Rhodes has opened up about why she probably would have deleted all her old adult film videos by now if she could. The 27-year-old from Chicago, U.S., entered the adult film industry at the age of 19 and left roughly a year later. Growing her own Instagram and carving out a career as an influencer, unfortunately, that also led to Rhodes becoming number one on Pornhub. It became hard for her to fully escape her previous job role. In an interview with Too Hot to Handle star and YouTube Harry Jow oh and YouTuber Harry Jowzy on his Tap In podcast, she was asked whether she regrets taking part in the videos and Rhodes' results. I do. I honestly tell people if I could go back, I would go up. I'm sorry. I do. I honestly tell people if I could go back, I would give up everything to have my dignity and respect back and for people to not be able to see me in that way. I mean, it's easy for her to say now nah, where she has a fame, where she has the status. Um, truth of the matter is she's there because of what she did. So for her to say, well, I wish I could take it all, take it all away. Who would you, well, have, who, who would you, you be today if you never you did you would that. be nobody. And would you want that? Exactly. So, oh, of course, yeah, I wish I could take this away but still be relevant and famous and rich. Okay, like... This is the reality that we live in. Do Come you on. think that that's what it is, though? Or do you think that, um, because, because I mean, I didn't see the whole interview or the episode or whatever the conversation was. But just by reading that, it almost feels like maybe she was young and she's like, you know what? I need money. I'm going to do this. And she probably just became bigger than what she thought she was going to be. Yeah. She became huge. She was uh, up there for a while. Yeah. I mean, well I mean, known. Very well known. So I imagine mean, what a I'm very short career. Yeah, very short. I mean, I'm kind of thinking it's one of those things. We've had a couple of like adult film, you know, actresses and, and whatnot. I'm thinking right now, top of my head, uh, Gina Valentina. She was great. Ooh. We had her on, and she said when she was young, she didn't really know. She just kind of jumped into it, and she became very successful very fast. Um, obviously, now she has her own things going on on the side, but. I don't know if she, I don't really know if I remember well. Did she wanted to? Does she regret doing what she did? I don't think she did. So here's the situation. I think that after she did the scene, um, when they told her that it was going to be published, she was like, "Fuck!" Like I, I hope it doesn't. Like I regret doing it. Ah, yes, I remember. But then once it was published, it was like, Out "I'm there. gonna, I'm gonna be the best porn star there is." Then at right. this point, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she slowly tapered off of that, and she's like, "You know what? I don't want to." really be doing that she kind of retired young however she's still doing i guess her own personal things her own scene. still within i guess porn yeah. but I, she's doing it more privately she's more in control of it right. versus how she was before you know with these people who i guess these agencies right, right. that just fit yeah pay you and that's it and they right it and same situation i mean they blew up very very young and it could also be that they're so young that they really don't understand what it is that they're doing because i mean think about it dude if at 19 you know what the fuck you were doing, right? Fucked up, yeah. You're almost being, I don't want to say taken advantage of, but you kind of like don't really know. Like groomed better. almost at yeah, that point. Yeah, because you don't know better. You don't. But that being said, I don't really, do I feel bad for her for wanting to wish that she could take all these things away? Not really, dude. I mean, no. you feel bad for her? Go on. Is there certain things that I wish I could go back and, and, and undo? Sure, of course. But like... She benefited from a lot of these actions that she participated in, like that that the porn that she she created. She is who she is because of that. So for you to say, well, I wish I wouldn't have been, I wish I wouldn't have done this, or I wish it could, could all be deleted. It's like you can't have it both things. You can't have it, have it all deleted 
and still be famous, still be relevant, still be rich. And I bet you money if she if you had to choose if she had to choose between the riches and the fame and all that and and being basic and average and yes. a nobody and then removing the porn all of that she wouldn't she wouldn't do that she'd be like fuck it I've lived with this all my life so what's the point why take it away now so let me ask you a question I was watching a video last night um this guy Simon Squibb he like invests in a lot of like small startups or whatever and um he poses this question whenever he's interviewing like co-founders for startups of businesses or whatever and it says um would you be okay I think this is how he phrased it. Would you be okay? Let's say, for example, you lived an amazing life, you made a lot of money, you have three homes, one in fucking London, one in Chicago, one down here, penthouse in, in South Beach, and um, very successful. Yeah. And, you know, let's say now you're 60, 70 years old, like maybe you have a couple years left to live. You know, you, you lived your life to the yeah. fullest. But it turned out that the way that you made all those riches was by scamming a shit ton of people and everybody found out right around that 70 year mark. Would you want to live that life? Would you be happy with that kind of result? Because think about it. It's almost like, well, you know what? I lived my entire life making all of this and it was a good life, right? Yeah. And then everyone found out that I was a fraud and I was fucking people over. Yeah. Or would you rather just live the average life? In this case, or maybe you know, may you know, try strive for something. Sure. Different. But would that would that kind of life be okay with you, if you just you know, because you lived? I mean, you're seventy. You're about to die anyways. Who gives a yeah. fuck, right? I wouldn't give a fuck. I mean, I'm seventy already. So you don't care if that's the the li like that's the life you chose. You made all your money. You had all these riches. You did all that, but you did it all by scamming money, and everybody realized that that they found out about. Well, you. why you're upset? Because people found out about it, or because you did it? Because you did it this it's whole a, time. It's, it's a question of character, right? And what you're telling me is that you would rather fuck people over for many years in order for you to have that self gain. Because if I already so did, what I'm saying is that if people find out about it, you already did it. So it's like, what's the point? You you decided to do this. So now you're upset because people found out that you were doing it? No, no, I'm not asking you that question. I'm not asking you that question. I'm asking you, would you, would you be happy with that kind of life? That you said, you know what, you did everything that you had to do. You, you made your good money, and you have all these retirement homes and all these things, but you did it in a way that was scummy. And everyone found out then at the end that you were a fucking piece of shit and you fucked over everybody. Would that be worth it for you? No, it wouldn't be. But That's my question well, Okay, so I thought you meant, like, I'm going to do it anyway so I don't people want find to. out about it. So it's like, because why no, would I do it? No, like the whole life you've just been scamming everybody. No, I, you know, I, in order I, for you to, I, nobody realized it. And then until the end, when you were about to die, they're like, wait a minute, this motherfucker <laughs> did all this by you. I see what you're saying. No, because like, I don't want to fuck anybody else over just to get ahead. Okay. So it's a yeah. question of character. That, right. It's a question of character at okay. this point. So and I think, you know, tying it to, you know, kind of you know, porn where it's like, would you rather just live a normal life or would you rather have all these riches knowing you did porn? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like now you can't undo it. You can't like now like if people found out that you scammed everybody, now you're a big piece of shit. And now everyone knows it. Yeah. You can't undo that. So it's kind of the same thing. So it's it's almost a question of character. In this case, for her, mm -hmm. it's like, what do you do now? You know, like you made all these riches, you were super popular, you probably had a good life to what you yeah. were saying, you know? But it's like, should you feel bad? But a side of me thinks I do feel a little bit bad because they were young. Maybe you make Dude, I don't make all the best decisions. I never made the decision to go all the way into porn. Yeah. But I can also see how maybe someone's like, hey, I don't know what. Or maybe they, they, they respond to like a modeling ad. And they're like, oh, yeah, models, whatever, come. And then they put them in the corner and they're like, oh, by the way, you know, we have this guy here, two models. Okay, hey, it's going to, you know, a little bit of risque, you know, touch each other. Oh, shit, all of a sudden, dick's in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> One thing leads to the other. And then the camera's all over the place. Yeah, no, I mean, I get that. Um I'm trying to see how long her career was because how she's not old, she's young. She's something. But um I get it. Yeah, like to a certain degree you were <laughs> young, you fucked up, you know. But Lana Rhodes son so she, and she has a yeah, kid too. She's 27 now. Um She's 27. She's 27 now. Okay. So not a not a long career but it's funny, when you look her up, <laughs> about Born, September 5th, 1996, movies, The Art of Pussy Eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one that pops up. Okay, so 
this is this is interesting because it says she began a professional adult film career at twenty uh, in two thousand sixteen at the age of nineteen. That is very young. So she left the professional industry by late twenty seventeen. So she was only in it for a year. So that that would have been my one. Yeah, a little bit. I guess over a year. That, w- that would have been my follow-up question because if you would have been like, okay, I was in, in, I was doing this for like five, six, seven, eight years, and then later on you say, hey, I wish I could take this w- this away, I'm like, okay, but she was only in it for about a year, you know, and then it goes, does she regret doing the scenes or does she regret the fact that it's all over the internet? Because those are two different things. <sighs> yeah, but they're they're tied together. So you think she regrets doing it? I mean, yeah, because I mean that's the whole point of. It's like you shoot the scenes in order for it to be on the internet. That's the whole reason why you do it. You don't just do it what to keep it on your phone with all these random dudes. Like no. It says former adult film star Lena Rhodes says she wants all her old videos to be deleted. Well, I mean, of course, because she made that decision to to go into porn. It's all over the internet. Yeah. To a certain degree, especially at nineteen, dude. What the fuck was you? Were you doing at nineteen? Not porn. No. This is a classic case, also of Mia Khalifa. Yeah. yeah, Mia Khalifa. Yeah. Same thing with her. That now she's like, oh, every single time I walk down the street, I just feel like people are looking at me and they're just visualizing me with my clothes off and it's disgusting. But it's like, bro, you were also getting digged down by like 18 inches of cock. And then you're upset that people saw it when you were posting it and stuff. I get it. It sucks. But at the end of the day, that's the decision that you made. I agree. But guess what? So maybe there should be a, they should increase the age limit. From 18 to do porn to like 25. But then that's too old. Fuck it. For most people, though, they're like that 18, that, oh, 18. you know, like that super young stuff. <laughs> but the whole reason why we're talking about this, I guess we're just tying it down to, you know, also the environment of OnlyFans. And also just kind of posting things that are maybe a little bit too provocative. A little racy. Yeah, even if it's on Instagram, dude. Like, you're posting, like, half-naked pictures and, like... Like, for what? You have... No, that's fine. I get... No, for what? To get followers, right? Do you want to build the audience? And then once you get the audience, you want to start converting, hopefully, convert it to something. Whether it be to drive traffic into OnlyFans so you can make money, or whether you start your own clothing line or something, and, you know, you post that in order for you to, like, generate sales. But at the end of the day, just think of just the way that you're doing it, the reputation that you're putting for yourself... Yeah, you have kids. Like, I, I'm so curious for the next 10, 20 years, maybe 30 years, once all these people who are on OnlyFans or porn, all these all these kind of industries, I guess, when they start having children, if they have children, and they go to school, and when they start realizing who they are, when uh, they see their mothers, yeah. and they start Googling or realizing, almost like that, that Kim Kardashian situation. That, you know, she was sucking off Ray J, and she has all these kids. She got famous for that. She did. It's the reason why she's... Kim Kardashian. And, you know, it's almost like those kids know that, right? Don't the kids know that she was sucking off Ray J? I think and they're a little bit too young for that. I think they know. In fact, I think she cried about it. If I'm oh, not mistaken. because I, th- I think there was an instance where they found out about the video online or they, they saw something. Because think about it. They're going to look up their mom. Who is Kim Kardashian? How did Kim Kardashian get famous? And then first thing that will come up is... The Kardashians. Kim calls Kanye in tears after Saint sees sex tape ad. Yeah. So there was an ad basically uh, probably and then she's like, oh. An ad? Ooh. Probably like one of those fucking things like, oh, girl, bigger dick with these fucking pills. And then underneath is probably a picture of her sucking off Ray <laughs> And Kim Kardashian. And then probably they're like, yo, someone showed me. Or maybe imagine in that school, maybe someone's watching porn and they're like, yo, isn't this your fucking mom, Kim? <laughs> and it's her with a fucking dick in her mouth. Yeah. That's wild, but like, yeah, again, it's so uh, yeah, she calls Kanye, yeah, f- the f- the father of the child, freaking out, basically saying like, "Oh shit, our, my kid, our kid, our kid saw, saw me, me fucking another guy." The reason on video, famous, yeah, you know what I mean? It's S- fucked. She was crying, yeah. So she wasn't like, "Hey, honey, guess what?" It was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe." So, like, these are the decisions that you're making today that I guess you're not really realizing that in eternity, yeah, forever, yeah, implications, perpetuity. It's always going to be there. Yeah. And I don't think everyone's, I guess, too busy living in the moment and being like, well, I don't give a fuck. I'm making all this fucking money in the penthouse in South Beach and Miami and Brickell. But like in 10 years, you're, there, you're then going to be that bitch who had her pussy on Instagram. Yeah, but you, you can even, obviously, this is on a huge scale, right? Like Kim Kardashian um, and, and like a lot of these OnlyFans 
models and and uh, and roads and all that stuff like that. But you can even go down on like a on a regular scale, micro scale, where it's like a lot of the girls, people that we know, they fucking have their whole phases. They want to fuck around, da da da. Think they're fucking hot shit forever. Then they hit 30, 32, 34, 35. Shit, I'm still single. No, no marriage, no kids. Oh, now I want a, I, I want a good guy. I want to settle down. And it's like, and then there's a lot of guys who say, "Bitch, you're 35 years old. I don't want you. You've been fucking. Why would I use think pussy you when I can get when I can get a 20 year old girl who's only been with whatever? Who knows? But then, 15 year old, 15 years younger. Or not even, or maybe another 25 or 30 year old. Maybe someone who's older who just wasn't a fucking slut. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe maybe she was just with someone and they didn't work out. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Type shit. But not someone who's been fucking staying a fucking club hubbing and dig riding for 15 years. (laughs) I think that, you know, I think that because we live in Miami, there's a really big, I don't wanna say culture, but just environment of just being like accepting OnlyFans and, and all this like illegal money that's coming in here type I, shit. I, I think you're in a very unique, because I feel like you think people in like Idaho have like <laughs> girls that they know like you're only In Boise. Like in <laughs> Bo- yeah, getting fucking flown out, being on a yacht every weekend. I mean, I'm sure there's some outliers, but I don't think no. that's the, yeah, the norm. The norm. As like, it like would we be know here. Exactly. So it's like, but there's going to be some woman out there who's like, hey, I, I want a good guy. I want to settle down. And they're 35, 36 years old. Like, oh, fuck, I don't you know. know. what? Should have sailed. I think this is a good opportunity to transition into the next one, into the next video, in the okay. same clip. Tell me. Because there is the video that I also sent you about this lady, and we'll ah, post this here as well. Are you following nice. along? This comment, this comment right here. Um, I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. Um, because I know that there will be somebody that steps up one day um, to be some sort of father figure for my child. And it's also very, like, I'm very surprised that you felt comfortable actually typing this out and commenting on someone's video. Like, it's just the wildest thing. You don't know my circumstances with my child um, or his father. And, yeah, that's basically it. So, essentially, what we're seeing here is single moms, yeah. right? So, now, this is obviously another extreme because, you know, people, maybe, you know, they're in relations for a very long time with just one person. They have a child. They divorce, and then, you know, they have the child. So, now, that's kind of maybe uh, a uh, not so much the, the common case, yeah. the lesser of the cases, but most people who probably had a child too young with the wrong person because they didn't really understand who they were with, right, making the wrong decisions. Yeah. Baby daddy, who is he? I don't even know. Type environment. And then it's like, oh, you know what? No man wants, what is it? Common. No man wants to raise another man's child and be the cleanup guy. Pass. So what you said, right? Yeah. They're older. And it's like, oh, we're all the good guys at. Yeah. And then she's there saying like, oh, no, no, no. This bullshit. Like, you don't speak for everyone. Guys aren't like that. There's guys out there. Yet immediately in the comment section, everyone is there saying like, yo, like, I'm not going to be that guy. You know? So now, that doesn't take away that, you know, there are a lot of single moms. In fact, we've had single moms that we've interviewed that you even said, like, yo, I changed my mind about that. You know, I I have a different perspective. But there is still, I think, maybe, the majority that are like, why would I? It's not ideal. And it's like, why would I? Like, it's it's just, and you've always said, like, the best, like, if if there's a situation that I don't really want to go in, the best thing is to avoid it altogether. You've said it all the time. So if I'm a single guy, like I mean, obviously we're fortunate we're in a really healthy relationships. But if I'm a single guy and I meet a, a, a girl that's or a woman that's has a two year old or a three year old or whatever, versus versus a girl that has no kids at all, you know, like one on one, like w- which one would I pick? Like, are you gonna Come get on. mad at me, dude? Yeah, exactly. Like, don't get mad at fucking me yeah. for choosing something that I prefer. Like, it's my preference. Yes. You gonna get fucking mad at me, make me feel like a piece of shit? No, absolutely. But now. That being said, am I going to speak for every man on this planet? Of course not. Just know that that pool shrinks much smaller. And then when you add like, oh, I want this guy to be at least 6'1 or 6'2, make this kind of money. Like, yeah. You're pin hole. Needle in a, in a haystack. Yeah, pin hole. To, yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that money. Oh, fuck. That guy's can't be choosy. Um, it's, just, it's just so much, so many variables with dating a mo- single mom with, who has kids. Like... Is the, the what's the relationship with the baby daddy? Are they back and forth? You know, like the parameters. There's just so much going on. It's like, 
it just sounds exhausting. And I've never dated a single mom. We've had on plenty of them. They were all fantastic women, great conversations, great episodes. And uh, but but like to the point, it's like it's all it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's gonna be. But I'm not gonna go out of my way to date a, a single mom. I'm just not. Uh, it's not in your cards. Maybe if you had your own child, yeah, then maybe that'll make a little bit more sense for you. Yes. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. If you have your, if you have kids, it's like, you know, Claudia. If, and it's funny because I've talked to Claudia about it, and she's like, "Well, we're at the age where most women will have, like, most of her peers." We'll have kids. And I'm curious to hear your perspective on it because it's like, because I told her if we don't work out, like, I'm not going to date somebody who has kids. Like, and she's like, oh, but chances are you're going to meet someone who already has kids. And I'm like, I don't know, because there's plenty of women that I do know that are my age, similar, close. They don't have kids. But, but then it's like, would you, you yeah, but a key, you said key words there. Tell me. Closer what? to my age. Yeah, closer to that my doesn't age. doesn't mean you have to stick with your age. Right. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, 100%. So, to her point, yeah. you're right. At my age, most women may have children already. Maybe not right now in this kind of a, this kind of generation because yeah. it's, it's kind of expensive. So, people are having kids a little bit later. But you can always just go into the generation that the dating pool. is younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, so, funny enough, man. I was or, ha- yeah, I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day on the phone. He was, he was like, hey, how's everything? How's Claudio moving in? What do you guys think? And I'm like, ah, amazing. Give it a little... The rundown, and then you know we'll have it, we'll probably have kids like within the next two years. And he's like, "Already? Like you sure?" Da, da, da. I'm like, "Dude, I'm 31. Should we 31? Like, like if we're gonna have kids, it's gonna be soon. You know, mm-hmm. like she'll be 31. There's a thing as as a biological clock for women, especially. And so then, and I'm, and I'm like, "Oh, remind me how much? How old is is your girlfriend? And and she's great as well. I've met her a few times. She's awesome. And he's like, "Oh, she's 24." And I'm like, of course you don't think about having kids now. Though. And he's yeah, believe that yeah. word. <laughs> Why well, you can say it? You can say it. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, he's 31 and she's 24, 25. Like, and I'm like, dude, you don't have to think about kids for the next five years. Like, it's, yeah, it's dude, fine. Fucking jackpot. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, lucky bastard. He's like, yeah. He's like, dude, I'm so lucky. <laughs> Fucked up. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> like, it's true. But yeah, so to go back to that, it's like, um, obviously dating someone who has kids is is, is not ideal. But it's also like if you don't work out and if you th- you could open up the dating pool and especially for guys like just date somebody a little bit younger and you don't have to deal with that. Yeah, because I think uh, traditionally women prefer older men. They do more responsible, more experienced, more uh, successful. Sure, but you know what? Do you feel like? Mo- I I feel like a lot of women don't wouldn't care to date a guy who has kids versus most guys. A lot of guys do care if the woman that they're dating has kids. Why do you think that is? Or do you agree with that? I think maybe instinctual. Like women are more nurturing anyway. So by default, it's like, what, well, a guy has a kid? Like, I'll take care of the kid. And I think so. I uh, maybe, I mean, I may be, may be wrong. Sure, sure, sure. But I think that speculate. their women are just more instinctual because I think every, not every woman, but the majority of women, I think that they, they want to have children. Yeah. So if they date a man who already has a kid, it kind of already warms them up to the idea of what that is. Yeah. And for the for the mother or for the woman who wants to be a mother, that's like a golden ticket for them. To like, where yeah. then when they have children or if they choose to have children and they agree to have children, like her own child, it's almost like, well, I'm already, like I'm ready. Yeah. You know, like I kind of already got the experience without really having my own. So you almost got practice. If anything, I think if you really want to have kids, now you're more prepared when you have your own child. I okay. think so. Yeah. Versus a guy, not that they're not involved and they're not as nurturing, but you know, it's I think it's a little bit more difficult to kind of enter a relationship that where there is a, a child because I think um I don't know, I think a man, I don't know if they're just more possessive or if they're more um maybe that they just don't like sh- I don't I don't know. What do you what do you think? I I I can't put my finger on it as to why um like men f- feel some so, so feel so much stronger about the whole situation than women because I feel like women they will gladly take take on somebody else's kid, but a, a few men will will step up to the plate. Do you think it's because primarily because of the extra child, like the extra person, the extra body, and the the attention going to that child, or do you think it's because of the father of the child that you also may have to deal with? Could be too. F- yeah, I think that could be. What do you think is more? I'm sure they're both. 
Or do you think is is a tougher, a, a bigger pill to swallow? Do you think it's the fact that the guy will then have to be like, well, now I got to share my wife or my, my girl. You know, I got to share her. Yeah, so I think to a certain degree, I think that will be the, the main factor. Or it's do you like, think it's like, oh, I got to deal with this motherfucker? No, because hey, th- the thing is, like, you have a lot of responsibility as st- the stepfather, but I feel like you don't have any of the privilege mm. as, a re- as, as the, the father reprimanding. Uh, we've talked about that. You, you, you ra- even raising the disciplining, raising the kid, whether that is verbally, whether that is, you know, like any of that, you really are at the mercy of the mother. She might say, hey, at reprimanding, that belongs to the father. That's his responsibility. And you're like, they're like in this limbo. It's like, what do I do? What do I say? Right, How can I raise right. this kid versus if it's your own kid? Well, that's my kid. And if he's acting up or she's acting up, it's like it's my responsibility and my duty to step up and raise and, and reprimand or, or raise that kid. I also hate to do this, but to um, reference Fresh and Fit. <laughs> okay. Marlon, who's the guy? That, the, I'm going to be kind of semi-racist, but the Middle Eastern looking guy. Myron. Myron. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Sorry, Marlon. Myron, he says, he goes, oh, one of the big things that I guess is really frustrating and really bad for the guy, why we don't want to do it is, imagine... Single mom, you start dating her, mm-hmm. right? You start investing into the child. You know, you build a relationship uh, with the child. Yeah. You now have this child considering you either the best friend, stepfather. Like, you're involved. You create a relationship, and the kid reads it, too. Mm-hmm. If it fails, or if the woman then just chooses to not want to be with you, or you guys break up, you're not just breaking up with her. Yeah. You're breaking up with her and the relationship that you built with the kid. Like That's getting destroyed, too. So think of the man, if he's very invested and he created this relationship, he now cares for this child, almost as if it's, if, as if it is his own. May not be. Yeah. But still, that, that kind of bond that you start formulating because you just kind of create that relationship gets taken away from you. It's not even yours, to your point. No yeah. privilege. It's not. So it's like, anybody really want to walk into that? Yeah. It's like a lose-lose situation. Like it's high risk, low reward. And it's not like I can have a child with just anybody. You know, I got to find someone who's willing to while a woman can. A woman can have a kid with anybody and have their kid if they want a kid. But guys, they got to find someone who's willing to also bear that child. <sighs> yeah, uh, to me, there's really no no benefit in dating someone who d- didn't have a kid. And if you're a single mom, which there's a lot of fucking single moms out there. It's like, oh, you're shit out of luck. And you know what? I think we should just continue transitioning through all these videos because sure, it's going to tie into this next one. And this is the one of the gentleman who shares about the story his his wife told him in the car. You ready? Okay, sure. I'm yeah. going to play it. I said, no, there's something that I need to tell you. And I said, is it bad? And she said, yes. And I said, is that about the marriage? And she said, yes. And then we began to drive back and I had the sinking feeling in me. And we drove for about five minutes in silence and then I went to put my hand on her lap and she said, don't. Don't touch me because you won't want to after I've told you what's happened. And I said, what's happened? And she said, I've been having an affair with a man from work. And I remember just tears began to stream. I I didn't move, completely motionless. Tears began to stream. And then she said, and that's not all. And she said, I'm pregnant with this child. And in that moment, I felt like I lost a lot. You know, I'd lost my wife. I'd lost the life we created. I'd lost... Uh, the dog, our home, her, her parents-in-law, her family, everything that I'd really held dear. If someone said, what makes a meaningful life? I would have described these things. And it felt like they'd just been snatched away, just came crumbling down like a house of cards. Oh, beautiful. Fucking devastating, dude. And don't get me wrong, I think... You know, women are also subjected to men being, you know, and infidelity and affairs at work and all that bullshit. But to all you fucking women who want to give us bullshit whenever we talk shit about women, 
these are the type of women we talk about. Okay? They exist. Just like pieces of shit guys wow. exist, yeah. so do women. And this is a great example of why we got to level out the playing field a little bit. Because it is, like, shit like that. At this point, that woman may as well, perhaps, might be a single mother. You know what I mean? Maybe the affair that she's having, maybe they stick together and they raise a child together happily. But, dude, she literally destroyed her marriage having an affair with one of her coworkers and is now pregnant. How does it even happen, dude? The fuck? How do you mean? What do you mean? How does it happen? Like what happened? Like to get pregnant? Like if you're gonna have an affair, dude? She's been. Ha- it's not that she had an affair. Like, an affair is not a one di- one time occasion. An affair is a thing that's been going on. Okay, so but then it's like you're gonna fuck around with another dude, not gonna use while condom. being married. While being married, you're gonna fucking let this guy fucking raw dog you, come inside you. Like there's multiple steps that are already required for it to happen. <laughs> the birds and the bees. How yeah, where do yeah, babies yeah. come from? <laughs> you wanna- then you have to be like there's. Certain months, there's only a few days out of the month where you're ovulating and are able to get pregnant. Like, there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen in order you to get pregnant. And you get pregnant by a guy that you're not married to. This guy's raw dogging you. Like, there's just so much shit that has had to, had to happen for, in order for this to this situation to unfold. So it's like, fuck you, dude. To throw everything away for an affair. And if you're not happy, then get the fuck out of there. Then divorce the guy. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good women out there. There's a lot of great guys out there, and I think this man may be one of them. There's also a lot of pieces of shit guys out there, and there's a lot of pieces of shit girls out there, yeah. and his wife is one of them. And I'm sure that there's there's a lot of people like that. I mean, it's not like everyone's everyone's golden, everyone's you know super healthy. There obviously a lot of people will have problems and you know they have their little hiccups, but wow. shit like that, dude. Like at that point, how do you how do you recover from that? Like that is a that is not only a kick in the nuts, that is a punch in the face, that is a stab in the heart, stab in the back, yeah. everything possible for a man. It's the worst. It's literally the the, the worst nightmare. Pregnant. Like pregnant. Your wife. Yeah. Imagine your girl. Right now, she comes home and she says, "I need to talk to you." Yeah. And not only because ch- cheating is one thing. But <laughs> cheat and be pregnant. Get pregnant. So are they telling you because they're going to keep the baby? I would assume so. Because if you're going to come, like, you could just get an abortion. And then, like, it maybe this You be- say that very nonchalant, like, if it's something easy. But I don't think everyone has the same view. I, no, it's spe- so so very controversial. Be a I little get, bit I, I empathetic get, on that. I, no, I am. But, like, to the... Well, empathetic to the person who's fucking cheated on her husband. I mean, no, relative. and just the people. No, no. I mean, no. <laughs> uh, empathetic to the people who, because you're like, oh, you could just get an abortion. Like, not everyone feels like that's okay. Okay, people that's where you draw the line. But like, fucking over your husband is no, that's okay? No, dude. To, no. But to me, it's like, like I, I get. Oh it. no, I understand you. I, I get. get it. I, I, I see. I understand. I, see what you I understand. Okay. Like, I, see, I understand. My, my understand. values and beliefs are different, especially when it comes to that. Sure. But it's like, whatever. It's okay, I, I get point. you. So it's 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 either okay. Um, at this point, maybe I don't agree with abortion. But would abortion be a better decision than what I've done? Right. Is that your? Yeah, point? yeah, one hundred percent. It's like, dude, you fuck, you you made a promise in f- in in, uh, in front. Well, if if your perspective is like, ah, no abortion, so you're saying, well, yeah, I, I I don't believe I believe in life. I believe in human life, but I made a promise in front of God to say hey, I love this person and I will. Do him no harm until death do us part, et cetera, et cetera. But you're gonna breach that. That you okay with breaching that? But abortion is where you draw the line. I got you. I that got I don't you. agree with, but to each own. Nonetheless, sure. Like he, ca- she came clean. Fuck, dude. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Would it make any difference if she said, "Hey, I'm gonna get rid"? Like I'm not keeping. <laughs> to me personally, it wouldn't make it. Th- 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 the marriage is done. It doesn't matter if you're going to... I mean, I was going to ask you, is there a way to salvage that? I'm, uh, <laughs> it's tough. Because <laughs> I even... I think I think just me as a man. Imagine me as a man. And I'm on that side. Yeah. Where I get another woman pregnant. Because at that point, I have no choice. I have no decision at that point. Yeah. You know? 
It's her body. True. I see what you're saying. Because then at that point, I th- th- what do I do then? You know? Which Yeah, which that does happen. Because I don't have that choice. Yeah. So for me, it's almost like, yeah, it ha- like you can't come back from that. Well, you as a as a man, you cannot like th- you, I you, I got somebody pregnant. Okay, you can't control this other person's action. But if a woman says I got pregnant by another guy, you can control whether or not you give birth to the to that baby. So if you say, "Hey, I'm going to keep the baby," I think that says more than the guy saying, "Yo, I fucked up and I don't know what we're going to do." Because at that point, it's out of your hands. So it's a woman's responsibility, not a responsibility. The woman's choice, I should say. <laughs> Sure, <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> <We're> canceled. <laughs> Either way, dude, you're fucked. I don't, I don't think you can come back from that. I, I honestly don't. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you because it's such a violent breach of trust, and I don't know wha- how anyone could come from back from that. Maybe there's somebody there who's hey, I'll, we'll maybe. figure it out. But I'm maybe sure they've I'm able been able to prevail. <sighs> I don't think I'll be. But I won't be that guy. No, I wouldn't be. I'm sure, I wouldn't be. That so relationship doomed. I I Benito? I think so, I think so, dude. Cause like, dude, like, it, it's tough. Cause we hear a lot of stories. Like I've heard of situations of, of people cheating to a very extreme extent, just like this, to mild cheating of hey, you know, I texted this person when I shouldn't have, right? And like, there's levels of like, well, how how salvageable is this? Yeah, that I think is is an extreme. Yeah, that is that is an extreme. I have a, I have a, I have somebody that I know who he cheated on his wife. She never knew anything about it. He came clean because he said, "Listen, I want to become better. I want to, I want to okay. do better." But in order to do so, I feel like I have to rectify a few of my mistakes. Be honest, be transparent with my with my wife. Yes, he came clean. She had no idea. Super devastated, flipped out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This has been a few months, maybe even a year at this point. And you would think, okay, like. Maybe we can move on from this, etc. However, every time they have a fight, they have a disagreement. She brings up, "Hey, but you, because I'm doing this because you did this two years ago or three years ago." And at this point, he's like, it "Drives him crazy because," and I'm not trying to take his side because obviously he did something terrible. But it's like I came to you, I told you about this. Two act, two things that you could do: you can either move on, we can figure this out, we go to therapy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or we we separate. So if you choose to stay with me, then we have to move forward collectively. But if every time there's a disagreement or there's an argument or I'm coming home late, you throw this in my face, then something's not right. So then, you know, my question to you is, <laughs> what Moral do you compass. Do? Yeah. Moral compass. Moral do I lie or do I st- tell the truth? Right. Well, he, he comes to me, he's like, bro, I, w- I should have never said anything. And I'm like, well, um, don't say that because I remember when you were telling me that you were going to tell her you felt terribly and you wanted to kind of come clean and just kind of start over. Maybe this would have eaten you alive. And he's like, no, man, like this is worse than telling than not telling her because I, I don't know. I'm not in that position. Everyone's moral compass is different. Right. That's my answer. Everyone's moral compass is different and you have to see what you're willing to bear. Because if, if you, if, if you lie, I mean, it's, it's, it's who you, it, like it's the character that you are at that point. And then it's like, do you want the question I told you earlier? The question I gave you. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you, what, what kind of life do you want to live? You want to live that life of being a fraud and lying the whole time. And then pr- possibly getting caught at the end of it. Yeah. Or do you admit and be truthful and then live that life? But then the life, but it's like, it's one way or another because I come clean to you and you, either we're going to separate or we stay together or we move forward. We, you can't have both. You can't say we're moving forward forward staying together but i'm still throwing this at you every time i can yeah at that point it's like but that's not fair to you or me no which we both deserve better right i mean how do you prevail if you can yeah um at that point it's sad because at that point it's almost like you you put the power back into the person who cheated right because now they're like yo I thought we, like, you said you wanted to move forward. And, and not for nothing, I think you were in this kind of a situation like this. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Where you're like, yeah. hey, like, I know. I get it. Yeah. Okay? And I told you, you found, or you found out whatever the fuck it was. We talked about it. We know. And we both agreed to move forward. It's a little unfair because it's almost like, yeah, you came clean. 
should you get brownie points for it? I mean, to a certain degree, yeah, but not to the point where it's like I'm hurting. You know, it's it, it's hard for me to heal. Maybe you feel better because you admitted it. Good for you. But me, I'm I need to heal from the lie, not just the lie, but the action that you lied about. So there's two things that they have to heal about. So un- unless they fully heal, which I think is tough. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible to fully heal because it's always going to be on the back of your mind. Always. So how do you how do you rebound? And I've been in a situation uh, on the other side where I was kind of like they told me that shit happened. And every little argument, I'm like, yo, this is why this and this is why you did that. That's why I don't like and it's like not fair either. But then but you realize I was in the position. You, you're true, yeah. true, true, true. So I was in the position that I'm like, no, well, well she she had said she was like, Listen, I don't I don't think this like it's not fair. Yeah. And then that's when I'm like, You're right. I, I agreed though. I'm like, you know, you're right, like I'm trying, but I can't. Maybe after some time, maybe things would have been different, but at that time it wasn't working. Yeah. It, and it, it's very tough when you have a f- when you're married and there's kids involved and you say, well, I want to stay for for the betterment of our family, but then it's like, it, it's such a corrosive thing that like cheating and fidelity, because no matter how deep you try to bury it or move forward, it, it has a way of kind of resurfacing. You know, yes. And, and, and sometimes at the worst time, sometimes something comes up or this and that, and it's like. It takes you back, and it could be a year, it could be two years, it could be five years. Um, and, and, and it's a, it's a, it's a lot of process. And I didn't really have the answer because I, my response was like, let's, let's either you you move on together, and and you try to f- move on and try to overcome this, or you separate. But overcoming means you move in the direction of healing, and healing does not look like. Every time there's a disagreement or an argument, you throw this into my face. Right now, to your point, it's gonna th- it's a long road, and your healing is gonna look different than my healing. And there are gonna be some instances where I'm gonna have to have where I stumble, and and I will bring this up because if it's only been three months or six months, it's still very recent. But if things have been like two years or whatever, it's like okay, like then it's also his responsibility or the person who cheated to give her assurance. To be proactive, to tell them, to be honest, to be transparent, more so than anybody else would normally would. Because yeah, you fucked up, even if it was two years ago. But you still have to try to step up and try to take go the extra mile. I'm thinking that's kind of what it what is required. And if there's couple therapy or individual therapy, whatever you can do to give your partner reassurance, kind of owe it to them. I I agree. It's just it's funny because I, I have one of my friends kind of in a somewhat of a situation like this. And it's like you also can't get lost in trying to over reassure. Because the thing is, we 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 live in the moment, and basically how we talked about OnlyFans and all these people who they chose to do porn, all these things, obviously, b- very kind of different extreme. But it's like you don't really think about the future and the consequences that it can cause, yeah. right? And so, for example, cheating is one. When you cheat today, it can cause big problems in the future. Yeah. But also trying to get redemption. Like trying to redeem yourself in it, where it's like, hey, look, like I fucked up, like I really want to do right, like I do my part to give you that reassurance. I feel like when you fuck up, you're so guilty that you overdo it. So now you're setting this new sort of like slate, like the new clean slate that you're trying to present. It's now of not, I don't want to say begging, but it's almost of like, well, now I'm down here. When are we ever going to be level? Yep. And that's kind of my concern with trying to resolve i guess cheating where it's like you're always gonna have like you're never gonna feel like you, you're 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 level you're never gonna feel balanced because you fucked up so you're always down here you don't and think there's ever a time where you could like like completely start over i only be on the same level and you f- i don't want to say start over but like only if they separate and come back after some time like a reset yeah they, i don't i don't think you can I was, I was gonna ask you that if you think that if that were to happen do you try to to plow through and continue the relationship and work together, or do you think it's probably best to break and then come back? <sighs> I think it depends, man. I it depends where you are in life. Because the thing, is, sorry, 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 sorry. The thing is that most people they don't want to like, especially when you when you're the one that, that fucked up. Yeah. You you want to do everything possible, no matter what, 
to prove that you still love them and that they're the apple of your eye, that they're the ones that you want to go after, that it was a mistake, I fucked up, it's only you, right? The problem is when you fuck up and you're doing all these things, you're like, hey, I'm gonna, you're only doing this because you fucked up. Bingo. And so it's like, Bingo. is this really genuine? And we've How been long can you hold that up? For? Exactly. And I feel like it takes me a little back. We've been in this position. Like we meaning me and me talking as a you more being like a counselor and, and, and a and a guidance. Because I felt like that for some time where it's like I want to make sure that I'm perfect and doing this and this and this and it's like, are you doing these changes for you or are you doing them for the exactly, person you're with? sustainable. Exactly. Right. And that's what I mean yeah. about you setting the precedent of the future 100%. by trying so you can't lose yourself. Right. So then sometimes disconnecting and taking a break, a few months, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And if at that point, or maybe even a year or two, and you've, you've said that too, it's like, and if at that point, maybe you rekindle, things come back into track. Okay, maybe we could talk again. But that time apart will give you a opportunity to reflect, why did I do this? Why did I fuck up? Because if you fucked up, there must have been something. What was the reason you stepped out? Because you want to make sure that this will never happen again. Because if you just get back together and then down the line you do it all over again, well now you did a disservice to you and your and the, the partner. It's not fair to either of you guys, especially not the partner, the person that you're with. So I think a little bit of time apart is going to be important if if you if you've cheated. I agree. No doubt about it. It's just t- it's a tough pill to swallow because the one who fucked up, they feel like if they give them time apart, that then they're going to do the same thing that y- that you did, right? And it's almost like no. Then, like, we're going backwards now, but it's like, dude. You have to give them the space that they need. And if they, they there's an oppo- there's a chance that they may not come back. That it goes two, three, four months. They learn to live without you. It becomes a lot easier. Maybe you don't hear back from them. Maybe they find somebody else. And if that, that that's a risk that you may have to take. I agree. Or, yeah. or they come back. They say, you know what? I took time apart. And I miss you so much, but I don't know if I can trust you. But I, I'm, I want, I want to try. Yeah. If we can really, you know, reset things. Like reset. What we're gonna can, have to yeah. change some things, but I realize that, you know, like for example, we always talk about everything is great, but then we highlight if there's one fuck up, then that's, you know, like if you. I don't, the thing is that cheating is a really big fuck up. It's I think it's huge. You can do everything right, but you cheat once, and it's like everything's ruined. You yeah. know what I mean? But. Maybe there's enough good, and maybe the reason for why you cheated <laughs> is not valid, but as bad. Yeah, who depends? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It depends where you were. I don't. Yeah, it's tough. I'm not. We're not trying to justify cheating at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. But Some people think that. I I think that maybe there's there's uh, different severities of it. It's still they're all wrong. They're all yeah. but different levels of wrong. Right. For sure. 100%. So I think I think whatever your tolerance is of being on the other side of the cheating, I think that would it's up to you to deter to determine if there's yeah no and no out. one can tell no one can answer that, but you you know so it's tough but sometimes the little break is gonna be necessary. You know, so I agree. Yeah. I agree. Hopefully we never have to find out in our yeah situations. But yeah. Um, and it's funny, I, I kind of to close off the episode, they're, they're based on that same video that I was telling about with that Simon Squibb guy, um, he, I think he had said when he was younger, he would always go to his parents for like the answer to certain things. Mm-hmm. So whenever he'd ask the question, they would always tell him like, you know the answer, like you know what you need to do. And then they'd be freaking out because they're like, fuck, I, d- I don't know. But deep down at the end of the day, you have a decision to make and you know what's that right decision. Whether it's the uncomfortable one that you choose to not want to do that you know it's going to be the one that solves the problem yeah. or the comfortable one that allows you to stay in the exact place that you are and you might not get the solution you're looking for. At the end of the day, I think everyone knows what the answer is and they, they know the severity of the actions that they take and it's up to you to determine what's the right one at the situation, the comfortable one or the uncomfortable one. Agreed. By the fucking basics. <laughs> <laughs> By the basics on thecarbreakup.com. We always have instances of people being in the wrong relationship and they don't know what the fuck is going on in the relationship where they fuck up and they don't know what the fuck is happening. Am I even with the right relationship or the right partner? All this bullshit. So the basics is a stack of questions that we've created, carefully curated, yeah. in order to ask the right questions, not whether you're early in the relationship to identify a potential partner or in a relationship for a long time. And yeah. you're like, man, 
let's switch things up. I really want to make sure I know who I'm with. The questions in the basics are the ones that are really going to uncover that to make sure, give you that certainty and that confidence that your relationship is the one that's going to succeed in the long term. Or, as we like to say, creating healthy breakups where maybe we should end the relationship before it gets a little bit too too deep down the road. Sure. Right? Yeah. So with that being said, head over to thecomicbreakup.com. Buy your copy of or your situation of the basics. And also starting from within, our book that we wrote together, Marvin and myself, in order for basically a guide of how to create healthy relationships not only with other people but starting with yourself. That's yeah. the whole point of this game. If you can't be happy with you, how can you make somebody else happy? And more so, how can someone else make you happy? And you don't even know what happiness is. Mm. Buy Very a copy well of Starting with, From Within from uh, Coffee Breakup. Yes. Perfect. I have one thing, last thing to say. I've been dying, dying, dying so much for, for a while now. I want to and this is going to be like a shout out to people because I want to do like live call-ins. And so I'm going to create a clip. Bro, if you're interested nobody in stays this long. I'll make a clip and I'll post the clip individually. How about this? Let's, let's run an experiment first. I don't want you to even put the clip up. If you've made it this far in the episode, I want you to DM us. Call. Sure. DM us call. Or comment on any of our posts. Call. Let's see if you're a real one. Because if you put a clip, people are going to start calling you. But I want to see who the real ones are. And then maybe after, a week after this is posted, you create that clip. And then we'll throw it on the stories, throw it on the reels, throw it everywhere. Just to kind of see. Because I'm curious to see how many people actually get. Sure. I, like I want to know who the real ones are. Okay. Well, if, if you want to join us on a virtual call, call into the episode. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. How about this? Those who actually DM us call or comment on our stuff call. We'll get you on a call. We're not only are we going to get you on a call, but we're going to have, we'll figure something out that we'll give you some something special. Well, maybe it's a copy of the card game. Maybe it's a copy of the book. We don't know, but we're going to take care of you guys first. If you then comment after when we post a video of us directly saying, hey, cool, we want to do virtual calls, you ain't getting shit, but we'll take the call. Yeah, for sure. Fair and enough. if you want to be anonymous, no problem. Uh, just call in. You, we hear a voice. It's recorded. No one needs to know where you are. It's like a radio show. Now. That would be nice. That would be cool, actually. I like that. So, yeah, so if you've got this, gotten this far, send us a message, call, comment, whatever it is. Love you. See you guys. Peace.